Hello everyone, I'm Dan. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss instructions, mnemonics, operands, and opcodes. Let's get started by opening up your web browser on my website, thegpu.com. I'm going to scroll down here to assembly language uh, and select instruction, mnemonics, operands, and opcodes. So this tutorial will expand on my introduction to registers tutorial. In that tutorial, I briefly introduced some machine language and I am now going to explain some terminology that ties assembly language and machine language together. Now the term, let's talk a little about opcodes first. So the term opcode is short for operation code and it tells the processor what operations should be performed. Now they are generally followed by an argument or arguments that further instruct the processor what to do. Now for all intents and purposes, opcodes are the things in machine language that make the program actually do stuff. So let's uh, take a look at some examples from my last video, right? So the opcode B8, which is the hex value, um, you know, basically that uh, tells the processor we're going to move something into the EAX register. The opcode B9 tells the processor we're going to move something into the ECX register. Uh, the BA tells the processor we're going to move something into the EDX register. And the BB tells the processor we're going to move something into the EBX register. Hex CD says we're going to call an interrupt. Okay. Now let's talk about mnemonics. So the term mnemonic goes hand in hand with opcode and is simply a friendly term used to describe an opcode. So the mnemonic used to describe the opcode CD is INT, which is an interrupt call. Uh, we could say something like, is int the mnemonic for the opcode CD, or conversely, is CD the opcode for the mnemonic int? Okay. So the mnemonic MOV, right, followed by the argument EAX, uh, is equivalent to the operation code B8, so on and so forth here, right? Makes sense? Now let's talk about operands. So operands are the arguments or parameters that directly follow a mnemonic. Now generally speaking, depending on the mnemonic used, there can be zero to three operands following the mnemonic. So for example, uh, in the MOV mnemonic, right? Um, EAX and the one are both operands. ECX2 is an operand. Two operands, two operands. Uh, for the int mnemonic, the interrupt mnemonic, um, this is the operand for it, which is hex 80, or in another form, hex 80, or in decimal form, 128. So those are what operands are. Now let's talk about instructions. So instructions are comprised of both the mnemonic and any operands. Instructions are the executable lines of code in the uh, .txt section of, the, of your code. So um, instructions make up both the mnemonic and the operands. So you can see everything's bolded here, so this is referred to as an instruction. So, Okay, so let's write some code, but before we do, I wanna talk a little bit about the first four registers. Now I've moved the I've removed the 64-bit register from the table below, and that is because we need to learn the basics of the 32-bit. In other words, the I386 or the IA32. You will commonly see those assembly programming before we proceed to 64-bit. Now the MOV MOV or move mnemonic is arguably the most commonly used mnemonic, so we will explore all 16 opcodes with relation to the first four registers below. The 16-bit registers will be prefixed with a hex 66 um, value, and I'll show you that in a minute there. So I just have the same table from my previous, uh, previous there, the accumulator, counter data, and base registers are what we're going to be talking about here in this one. All right, let's go ahead and we'll just come down here and copy the code first. Okay, let's copy that. I'm going to pop over to... Great, I didn't want that. I'm gonna pop over to the um, Ubuntu virtual desktop here and let's go ahead and open up terminal. And the first thing we're gonna do here is um, I'm gonna do an mkdir for make directory uh, assembly, right? Now I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create one for you. Now let's change directories to the assembly folder. <coughs> And today I'm going to make a, a folder here called um, ExploreMov. Dot uppercase there. Yeah, let's get my DOS commands mixed up with my Linux stuff. All right, 
change directories to the uh, explore mob folder. I'm going to use leaf pad here to uh, and to do the explorer. By the way, um, you know, in one of my first videos, I set up leaf pad. I also set up NASM. You want to make sure you get those installed before you continue on with this. You don't have to use leaf pad, but I happen to be a fan of it. So, all right. Uh, now that we got that open, let's just come over here and let's paste all that source code in here. All right. Everything looks good there. Let's save this. Let's come over here and open a new terminal. Okay, let's uh, change directories to the uh, assembly folder. Let's change directories to the explore mob folder. Let's do an ls. So there's our file there. All right, so uh, nasm minus f uh, and explore. There we go. Let's go ahead and assemble that. Let's do an ls. There's our object file. Let's do an ld minus m elf underscore i386 and we want our out our o file for our object file that's what we're going to do the linking on and our output file will be uh, that okay all right so now we have our executable here let's go ahead and just run it just for good measures it won't actually display anything or do anything to the output there but it does does work fine there Okay, now let's go ahead and open up the hex editor again here. WX hex editor is the one I'm going to use here. File open assembly and explore mod. And let's go ahead and open that up here. All right, um, so from my previous tutorial, we know that B8 is, uh, is the move. Uh, instruction for the EAX register here. Um, so let's come right down here and here's where it all starts, right? Um, so just moving this a little bit aside there, you can see there's our instruction where we move EAX into one and here's the disassemble over here. Okay. So B8 is the opcode here. And for the next one, B9 tells us that we're going to move two into the ECX register. And you'll notice this will increase by from the accumulator to the counter register. B8 is the accumulator. B9 is the counter register, right? Um, the next one over here, BA, which in hex is the next number up, right? Tells us that we're going to move three into the EDX register, the data register, and then finally BB for the base register, moving the value four in there. Okay, so these are all our 32 bit values, and you can see, you know, represented in hex over here, where we've got four bytes going in there, times, of course, eight bits per byte, 32 bits. Now, the next instruction here, we've got uh, this B8 right here again, but it's prefixed with 66, so. Um, and we're only dealing with 16 bits, which is two bytes. So highlighting all of these, you'll see we're moving into the AX register, the value of one, okay? And of course, since we're dealing with the A register, you'll notice it's kind of similar. Hey, we got a B8 up here, but the 16-bit register is, uh, the AX register is, which is the lower 16 bits of the EAX register, right? is represented by the 66 prefix. Same logic goes along here, 66 on the B9 register, which is the counter register, the C register, 66 to BA, which is the D register, and 66 B, BB, we're gonna move value four into that, which is the BX register. Okay, now here's where it starts changing up a little bit, because we're gonna deal first with the, the um, accumulator register with the high bit there. And so that is represented by B4 for the op code. And then, of course, you can see we're moving one into the AH register on that. B5 is the, is the C register. B6 is the D register. And B7 is the B register. Okay. Oh, which is the base register. All right. Now, if we're going into the low bits here, right, the ALCL, DL and BL, we start out at B0 is the op code for, for the moving something into the AL register, right? B0, and then this is moving two into the D register, or I'm sorry, the C register. Uh, B2 into the D reg is the op code for moving something into the DL register. B3 to the BL register. 
All right, um, then looking in our code here, we move um, one back into the EAX register, which happens to be the sys exit uh, system call there. We move that into the AX register, the 32-bit register, and then we move the value zero, which is the argument um, for the system exit um, sys call. And then CD is the opcode for the interrupt here, and then you can see the 80 right over there. So if we take and we highlight all of this, you're going to see all of our instructions that we have for the whole entire program up here, right? Okay, so that pretty much does it for the uh, NASM stuff there. Let's pop back over to my other screen here. And we are going to come down here to the MASM stuff and copy that. Pop back over to Visual Studio, File, New, Project. Visual C++, Empty Project. We're just going to call this the same thing, Explore Mov. Okay. Up here on the debug portion up here, we're going to change that to release. We're going to come over here, right click on this, go to build dependency, build customizations, and select uh, MASM. Okay. And source files. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, we're going to come over here to properties. Opened up in this other window for some reason. Okay, we're going to go over to linker system. We're going to set the subsystem down to console for our output and input. Advanced, we're going to set our entry point to underscore start and scroll down here at the bottom for image has safe exception handlers. We are going to select no on that. Uh, okay, source files. Let's go ahead and add a new assembly file here. We'll just call this explore mov. Be sure to add the .asm extension on there, otherwise, it'll think it's a C file. And let's paste all this stuff in here. Okay. Now we have the exact same stuff going on as we as the the NASM tutorial did, and um, only with a difference. Instead of putting a system call here, we actually you know invoke some something different here in Windows. They're using basically API calls instead. So we're just going to run this, make sure everything runs okay. It'll open it up into a, another window here, and of course we exited. We'll just press Enter to do that. What we're interested in here is looking at the machine language. So let's go ahead and build it. All right, that's done. Open up the hex editor here, HXD, and we will open that file here. Ex assembly, explore mob under the release folder. Here is the application. Okay, so let's come up here to the search find. We're going to select the hex values tab, and we're, we're going to search for B8, right? And which we know is the opcode for moving something into the EAX register, the 32-bit accumulator register. All right, so it finds this one right off the bat, but that's not what we're looking for. That doesn't have the signature we're looking for, nor does that. Um, that one doesn't either. Okay, here we go. Now we're looking for... So this is um, move into the EAX register one here on x86.32. So before there, I don't think there's any need to go over that all over again there, uh, talk about that, but, uh, but that's pretty much the way that works there. You can see once we move into the 16-bit register here for the AX register, um, the 66 is a prefix to B8, okay? Um, and then over here on the disassembly for the 32-bit portion of it, you can see move a, uh, AX. And and, and um, this this technically shouldn't be a 32-bit value here. It should be a 16-bit value, just a little, uh, I don't know, I'd call it a bug in HXD. But anyway, uh, the other, as you saw in the other one there, it actually represented proper values because... Whatever. All right. Um, you know, I think that will pretty much uh, do it for this tutorial. But anyway, stay tuned to my, for my next tutorial where I will introduce you to system calls. We'll start off with system right. Um, that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.